16, 13. Can I? And then we're going to read it together. We're going to start at verse 13. There we go. All right. Those of you that can read, I want you to read. I want you to read loud and clear. Because you're about to decree some things over your life. Amen? All right. Ready? Let's read. When Jesus came to the region of Syria, Philip, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, What about you? <laughs> Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, ready, let's read together. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, will not overcome it. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. All right, y'all. Come on, let's do this thing together. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Oh, my God, you got power. You got power. You got power. Do you know you got power? From the littlest child to the oldest person in this place, you got power. But I got a question for you. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Just like Jesus asked Peter, I'm asking you today, who do you say he is? And my next question is going to be, who do you say you are? See, we can always see him as God Almighty, but who do you say you are? Because he said, I've given you the keys. I give you the keys to do some things, to declare in the atmosphere. I've given you some keys. Who do you say I am? You can have your seat at this time. If you can please go ahead and get my slideshow together. Who do you say that I am? Mm. Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Peter was not around when Mary got pregnant. He was not around when the Holy Spirit came upon her. He was not around. But God revealed a secret unto Peter. Because see, some people say, oh, he might be Elijah. He wanted a prophet. He's a good teacher. But who do you say I am? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I am. See, there is a I am. Read with me. Jehovah, the great I am. Now, we're going to have some scripture to back this up. God told Moses, I am the Lord. Exodus 6 and 2. So he is what? The Lord. Keep going. Isaiah 43 and 3. I am the Savior. Glory be to God. Reference scriptures for that would be Isaiah 43 and 3. I, the I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel is your Savior. Romans 10 and 9. Just read that together. If y'all can see, can y'all see this? There's a little, can you see it? Okay, Romans 10 and 9. Let's read that together. For if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, so now the I am, the big I am said I am your Savior. So you being the little I am, see so you, you ain't God. There's only one God, one Lord and Savior, one faith. One baptism. Oh, I come from the Baptist church, you understand? Oh, yes and amen. Hallelujah. So, the little I am, because God said, I am the Lord. I am the Savior. You as the little I am say, I am saved. I am whole. I am free. I am the one that God has called. He has chosen me. I am saved. I don't care what no one else say to you. You believe what God's word say. I am saved. Well, how you can be saved and you know what you did last night? I am 
I'm saying by grace. It was the grace of God that came on my life and saved me. All right, let's read Psalms 18 and 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and my horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The Lord is my rock. That means I got something that the Lord told Jesus. Jesus told Peter, say, upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know why? Because he is my stronghold. So I'm not weak. I'm not weak. I'm not defeated. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Glory. my deliverer i've been delivered from sickness i've been delivered from sin i've been delivered from the attacks of the enemy though the weapon may form it shall not prosper because i've been delivered okay let me bring it down a little bit bring it down bring it down you're just getting started girl see you see i, I oh, oh. turn it up on you. I'm going to turn it up on you because let's go to healer. Let's go to healer. Oh yes. The big I am said I am your healer. All right. Let's read this. Ah, uh, Come on. Come on. Let me get a healer up here. I'm going to go to Isaiah 53 and 5. And your time, you can read Exodus 15 and 26, you know. You know, because he heals you. He already brought you out of Egypt. You ain't in Egypt no more. Why you keep looking back? Why you keep looking back, picking up through sickness? Oh, my diabetes, my high blood pressure. What? That don't belong to you. All right. Okay. You know, I told the Lord, you know, I said, God, you know what? I don't want to scream at your people. I mean, I'm telling you, I was in Colorado Springs going to New Life Springs Church. And I was talking to the Lord. I was looking on Facebook because, you know, Minister Bambi putting you out there. You know that? So if you ain't ready, you better get yourself ready because he's going to put you out there. He's going to have you all out there on the media. Oh, yeah. He is. So you know what? When you see yourself, just say, praise the Lord. So I was listening to one of the devotional I was doing. And I said, God, it seems like I'm yelling at your people. I said, God, I don't want to, because that's not me. I'm not a yeller. You know, you make me angry, I yell, but you know, that's a different story. But most of the time, I want to talk to you like this. You know, I want to talk to you with love and patience and kindness and long-suffering. So I said, Lord, I don't want to be yelling. And you know, I got to the church, and a man of God, Pastor Boy, he was preaching on, ministering on, teaching on Colossians. And I'm telling you, Paul was bringing it down to the church of Colossians. Because sometimes you feel like you're the least of everything. You feel like nobody see what you're doing. You feel like you're insignificant, that you're not making a difference. But yet you, 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 you got a passion for Christ. And you, you telling people about the Lord, but it seems like nobody recognizing you. And Paul was telling the Colossians, you know what, I'm hearing about you. You don't think people talking about you, but they're talking about life changes in the national ministry. And he said, I'm telling you, they're talking about you, and, and I'm hearing about your faith, and I'm hearing about what you're doing in your area. And it said, he said, Paul began to say it three times. And he said, anytime you hear in one scripture, and you hear in one book, one verse, excuse me, one, you know, like the Colossians 1, and you hear it more than one time, three times, he says, as if God yelling at you. I said, oh, God. Now, I know only me and you had that conversation. So he said, Olga, it wasn't you that was yelling at them. It was me warning them that if they don't get it together, if they don't turn and change, that these things are going to come on upon them. Don't frustrate the anointed, he said. And he was saying it for a purpose. So it wasn't me that was really yelling. It was God telling you something. You know, God's trying to tell you something. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. You remember that song? Right now. All right. Let's go to healer. I am healer. All right. We're going to read Isaiah 53 and 5. Let's read it together. 
but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And come on, come on, come on, move it, move it, move it. And by his stripes, where the rest of that girl? Give me, bring me the rest. Give me the rest. Come on, come on. Y'all know the word. Y'all know. Y'all say that. Ooh, by his stripes I am healed. Ooh, oh, oh my back. Oh, no, by his stripes. I, ooh, girl, I just got a head. No, by his stripes I am healed. See, you are the heel protecting your health by the words that you say out of your mouth. Oh, yes, I understand headaches come because, girlfriend, I get them too. But you know what I begin to say, oh, devil, you is a liar. My head, my pressure, every vein in my head is going to orchestrate like God has commanded to do, and it's going to work in perfection. And, you know, the other day I was in the salon, you know, I've been having these attacks on my body, but I come against the attacks. So that, that day, in particular day, I was sitting down. I couldn't even get up to do my client yet, and I was just rubbing my stomach. And I was rubbing that stomach. And I was babying that stomach. And finally, I got enough of that. And I began to turn my worship on, and I began to preach to her. And by the time I was finished with her hair, she said, I guess you don't feel your stomach no more. I said, girl, it been going a long time ago. But there's something you have to encourage yourself. You got to begin to speak the word. I know it hurt. I'm not telling you it don't hurt, but I'm telling you, you got to speak the word in the midst of it hurting. You got to speak the word. You know, David will come to God and he'll have a pity party at first. Read the book of Psalms. I'm telling you, man, let me tell you, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit and was able to really understand the word of God, I was like, God, there's more in here than all these. I'm a reader. I love to read. So I got books. I used to have books upon books upon books. You know, I like romance books. That's how I traveled. Sometimes you don't get out of Charleston. But if you can read a book, it can take you places that you never thought you could go. But when I got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to read the word of God, I was like, oh, my God, this is in the word. They're getting this from the word. The world is getting this from the word, word and trying to profit off it. And I was like, wow, God, this is in here. Incest is in here. Oh, my Lord, that's in there. Oh, my God, that person did, David did that for real? But yet he still used him. But you think we're supposed to be perfect because we in God. We serve a perfect God who gives us a perfect spirit in this imperfected body. But with his perfection come on it, and we begin to have conviction. See, David will, in the beginning, read songs. I'm telling you, read the different songs. I'm telling you. Sometimes he'll start off complaining about everything that's going on and all these things are coming against him, and he just feel like giving it up. But then he'll say this, nevertheless, God, I know that you are with me, and I know that you'll never leave me nor forsake me, but you'll be with me until the end of time. For you are my helper, you are my fortress, you are my shield, and in you do I put my trust. Oh, yes. So, the I am healer, the big I am, you see that's the big I am, now they got it like I want it, hallelujah. The big I am is the healer. And you can stand on these scriptures right here, Isaiah 53 and 5, Exodus 15 and 26. But you as a little I am must be saying this, I am healed, whole, well, sound in my soul and in my body. Because your spirit man is well. <laughs> your spirit man is sound. It's your spirit man that you need to dominate your soul so your body can line up. Okay, that ain't where we going at, but I'm going to let you know that's what you got to do. You got to do that. You got to spend time in God's word. You have to. You got to spend time. How do you know what the word going to say if you don't spend time with the word of God? You can hear the preacher preach all day, but a day you take and do it yourself, you're going to understand that word better than ever. Because you know what? Your understanding may go to a whole nother level because of that. Now, y'all, I got these new, neat, new technology, and I can't even open it. Okay, there we go. All right. You are my strength. Isaiah 41. If I can get Isaiah 41, my strength. I am your God and strength. Let's read that together. Isaiah 41, let's read it together. So do not fear. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did y'all just see that? Oh, I don't know what gonna happen. Ooh, I scared of the, go down that road right there. I scared of the, you know, I don't wanna be down there at night. Come on now, tell the truth, stay in the church. 
oh, what's going to happen? I, I'm so afraid. I'm, not, I'm just afraid that, you know, they're not going to accept me. And, and when I go to work tomorrow, I may not have a job. What does that thing say? Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. You know, as a lady, you know, as a female, as a, you know, a woman, is, you know, I'm a woman and I'm a woman of God and I'm a wife and I'm a mother. But it ain't nothing like when your man say, girl, I'm your man. I got you. Or, you know, your husband, when, they, when the wife tell you, I'm your sweetie, I got you. God is saying, I am your God. I got you. I am your God. What do you want? You don't need to fear. So you should, as a little I am, you should say, I'm strong. I'm not fearful. I will not fear the terror by night, nor the hours that fire by new day. It shall not come nigh my dwelling. Shall I shall only be a spectator of that which is evil. Because my God told me, do not fear. Do not fear. What you scared of? Do it. Just do it. Get the idea together. Market it. Just do it. And he said, you know what? I'm your peace. Ain't nothing like a peace. Oh, my Lord. Peace in your mind. When things are just trying to take over. Like, oh, no, God. You my peace. You are my Jehovah Shalom. You are the peace in the midst of every chaos, confusion. You are the peace that go with me. Peace I give unto you. Not the peace like the world, but this peace. This peace will calm the ways. This peace will cause the enemy to be quiet. This peace will bring dominion in your house. The peace of God will be on your house, in you, as you go through. Peace I give unto you. Say, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. <laughs> you ain't get it, but, you know, those who watch movies, y'all. Okay. You got it. All right. Let's go to John 6 and 35. Now, you know, I gave you some Old Testament scriptures. And one New Testament, but now I'm going to give you some New Testament scripture. You ready for it? All right. <laughs> I am the bread of life. Let's read that with you. John 6, 35. Let's read it together. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he, he who believes in me will never thirst. <laughs> you know, the, the lady was at the well, right? And, you know, Jesus asked her for a drink of water. And, um, you know, she was like, huh, you, but what you got to do with what, what, me and you, we don't talk like that. You know, our people and our, your people, we don't intermingle like that, you know. And Jesus said, you know what, if you really know who I was, when I asked you for that drink of water, you wouldn't hesitate. And he said, don't you know I got living water, water that will, you will never thirst again. Or oh, he got her attention because you know that woman, she was about getting hers. She said, give me some of that water. Where, where that water at? Give me some of that water. You, you mean, tell me, I ain't got to pop this water no more. I ain't got to come down to this way. Give me, where, where that water at? He said, I'm the living water. You will never thirst. You will never be without. I am with you. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. I'll be with you until the end of time. You will not go hungry if I got to send a prophet to your house and tell him to take that meal and that little bit of meal and make me a bread first so that you and your household can survive in this famine. If I got to tell the woman of God, bring your two might to the altar because your God will provide for you. He ain't going to leave you. He is the bread of life. He is the bread of life. He is the bread. Say, all my needs will be met. 
Now we're going to say it like this. All my need is met. Well, I got plenty of more to put in store. All pressed down, shaking together, running over. In a, oh, what am I singing? Say? Oh, okay, I got no backup today. Y'all be my backup? All right. Olga in the LCI. All right, let's go to John 9 and 5. Let me see how my time coming. I got a timer on y'all. I ain't worried about y'all. I got my own timer. All right. Ooh, 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 ooh. The big I am said, I am the light, the resurrection, the way. Mmm. Ooh. We're going to read all of this. Y'all don't mind, right? Y'all don't mind reading the word, right? Y'all don't mind, right? All right. Let's go. John 9 and 5. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay, 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 okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, while I'm in the world, then I'm the light of the world. But we, are, we know that he already resurrected. And he already went to heaven. And, you know, he's making intercession. But So how can he so be the light in the world? Oh, because he placed himself inside of us. So now we become the light. You are the light of the world. The world is waiting on you to shine your light bright. Because a light, the light, the light, the light that is in you is what people are going to say before you say, see before you ever open your mouth. Because he said, you are the light. You are the light. You are the light. So what are you doing out there in darkness? Do they really have any association? Because you thought you can hide with darkness? But one thing about light, I don't care how dark it is, it could be a little spark and it be seen. You thought you were hiding, that nobody would know you were a believer, that you love God, that you cray cray for God, that you sold out for God. So you try to go on that job and act like them, and they're like, no, something about you ain't right, you know? Marvin Sapp had this testimony. He said when he was younger, you know, he tried to hang out. You know, they, they say, you know what, you church boy, what you doing up in here? He wanted to go to the club. He wanted to get his drink on and get his party on, too. He was like, you know, everybody else doing it. Why shouldn't I do it, man? All I do is go to church, go to church, go to church, go to church, go to church. Go to church. And they say, man, what you doing in here? Are you supposed to be getting ready for church? You must be praying for them people. He said, now how darkness gonna tell me? Because your light is shining. And if your light keeps shining around me, it gonna get on me. Don't you know that's what light do? It get rid of darkness. God said, in the beginning, there was darkness on the face of the deep. The enemy and I came to earth and he wrecked havoc on it. He said it was darkness. But guess what, dark, guess what God said to darkness? Let there be light. And immediately, light was there. No more darkness. And now you can see better. They can see better when you're around. You know, some people are like, man, when you're you around, things happen. I mean, I mean, your boss saying, you know what? You, your sales are always coming through. You're always producing. Everybody, all the patients want to know if you, you want staff today. But where, where, where that pretty girl at? You know that pretty one? You know why? Because when she comes around, it's not just about her outward beauty. It's about that inward glow, that inward love, that inward light that shines upon them in their sick body. And when that light come through, all of heaven come through with her. All right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. John eleven twenty five. Y'all, y'all. Hope y'all writing some scriptures down. If y'all need me to email, I email it to you. But um, John eleven twenty five. You don't know the teacher said you should tuck your notes when I had it up here. But I might, I might email. You know, I'm a teacher. All right. John eleven and twenty five said. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Oh my Lord. You know they said to be from the body is to be present with the Lord. So you know what? If I live, that's gain. If I die, that's gain. You know why? Because if I die, I know I'm going to my Father and I'll live forevermore. He said after this time, death is not, death ain't the end. He says truly the beginning. Because now you 
get to live the life that I truly call you to live. A life to worship me. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more darkness. Because God himself will be the light. And there'll be a new Jerusalem right here on this earth. Revelation, that's where it comes from. All right, John 14 and 6. Come on, let's read this. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my time to say I'm done. Oh. Y'all hear it? Oh, what should I do? Should I say stop? Why should I repeat? Should I say stop? Snooze. Gordon, what should I do? Okay, I'm going to finish this one up. And then I'll just kind of talk fast. You know, I can talk real fast, you know, right? All right. All right. I can't. All right. Jesus said, I am the way. Way maker. He said, I'll make a way out of no way. Oh, yes. He made a way for me. He said, when you don't know the way, just ask me and I'll show you the way. For I am the way. He said, when you looking for truth, come into me. Buddha ain't truth. Muhammad ain't truth. I am the truth. I am the way. Okay. I am the way. The truth. The life. Don't you know you can't even get to the Father unless you come through him? There's no other way to the Father. He guaranteed you that. That if you come to me, you'll get to the Father. There's no other way. You can't do good to get in. See, some people want to do good. You know, I'm a good person. I've never done wrong. Okay, and that impress God. Well, you know, well, maybe I just ain't worthy. You know, because I done did this and I done did that. That ain't impressing God. He ain't moved. Don't you know he, was, he knew you was going to do that? Don't you know he knew you was going to be that good? For he knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. That don't just go for Jeremiah now. That goes for every one of us. He knew your shortcomings. He knew your faults before you even knew it. He knew what was going to happen in 2018 before you knew it was going to happen. But he made a way. For you to come out. No one comes to the Father but through me. It's through Jesus Christ. I don't fear darkness. The glory of God is with me. And God is the way. There's one more that I'm going to go to. And you know, um, he's the way, the way, the way. The way, the way, the way, the way, the way. The way, the way, the way, the way. I'm going to pro provider. Come on, let's go to provider. Come on, the provider. You know, oh God. <laughs> don't you know provision is not just money? When Abraham said, God is my provider, was Abraham talking about money? God provided him a sacrifice. God provided him a way out. God provided him that which he needed in that time, in that season, at that point in time. God provided for him. It's not just about money, y'all. It's not just about money. What do you need from God? A provider way of escape. What do you need from God? A provide protection. What do you need from God? I'm a provider. Hallelujah. Uh, Philippians 4 and 19. Come on, let's read it. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. My God, my God, Jehovah, the great I am. My God, Jehovah Nisi, the banner that I wave in victory. My God, Jehovah Shalom, the peace of God. My God, Jehovah Shammah, who will never leave me nor forsake me. My God, Jehovah Adonai, he is the most high God. My God, 
Thank you, Lord. I want to read this last scripture to you that God gave us on Wednesday night. And I'm telling you, he is making a way for you. He told us that whatever we decree in this season, he will bring it to pass. You don't understand. Whatever you decree, in this season, he will bring it to pass. I want to read that to you. Coming from Job 22, 21. I'm going to actually go down. It's from 21 to 30. But I want to read this part to you. Because I really believe it's a word for someone in here today. It's a word from God. Hmm. Job 22, 21 to 30. You'll take delight in God, the mighty one. And look to him joyfully, boldly. You will pray to him and he'll listen. He'll help you do what you've promised. You decide what you want and it will happen. Your life will be bathed in light. To those who feel low, you will say to them, chin up, be brave. God knew this was going to happen, but he's going to make a way of escape for you. Yes, even the guilty will escape through God's grace that is on your life. He said, yes, they were guilty. They did what they did, but he said, because of the grace that is on your life, I'm going to make a way of escape. You ever had a friend got in trouble, but because of you, you know, the principal know you, and it's like, you know what? Now, you hang with her, right? All right, I'm going to give you another opportunity to get this thing right, okay? You oh, y'all ain't know about me then. Because my sisters and brothers, they will use my name for sure. Oh, you all good? Oh, okay, 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 you fine, you fine, you fine. Oh, okay, 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 all right. Because there's a glory, there's a grace on your life that even the guilty, even the ones who did wrong, God will make a way of escape for them. Because of your prayers, the prayers of the righteous do avail it much. And I'm telling you today, you are a light. And let your light shine before man. Don't let the light be hidden. Because guess one thing about light? 
You can put it under the bed and it's still going to shine. And you know what? You can even think you can turn the light off. If Jesus can walk through the door with the door being closed, <laughs> just because you hit that switch don't mean that light is off. They still see it. Hallelujah. Would you please stand to your feet at this time? Oh, Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we are the redeem of the Lord. And we know what the word says in the song. Say, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Say, I am redeemed. I am whole. I am at peace. And I can do what God said I can do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Father, we say thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that every heart that has heard has received your word. Every ear, God, is now is going through their spiritual ear gate. And they're going to recall it as they lay down, as they sit down, as they drive. God, they'll recall the word. And then they'll begin to speak the word. And they'll begin to say, oh God, I know provision has been made on my behalf. I won't worry about these bills. I'm not going to worry about these kids. I'm not going to worry about my husband. I'm not going to worry about my job. Because you told me in your word, do not fear. Fire with you he'll never leave you he'll never forsake you hallelujah do you believe that on this morning do you believe the word of God so I'm telling you in this season God hears you he's listening He'll help you, and whatever you want, whatever you desire, ain't even about your needs, because <laughs> he already met all your needs. He said, but what, what do you desire? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Tell me. Your daddy asks you, what do you want? want what do you desire I'll make it happen I'll make it happen for you I never left you I was with you always even when you couldn't see I was right there with you He loves you just as you are. He loves you. He loves you just as you are. And he gave his son just for you. He gave his son for you. He paid the price. He was the ransom. He got you out. You couldn't get yourself out of that, but he got you out. And he gonna make a way. And he gonna turn it around. If you just believe, it's gonna work in your favor. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But then I like the part that said, but I've been justified by Jesus Christ. not about man
this about who God is in your life. I want you to raise your hand if you never made a mistake. You never made a mistake? You never made a mistake. You never made a mistake. So let me tell you, look around. None of us can raise our hand. But our Redeemer paid the price for that mistake you made. And he don't hold it against you. Man may hold it against you. Man will try to remind you. And sometimes even your back of your conscience will do too. But I want you to remember this one thing. That God has already paid the price for you. And he'll do it again and again and again and again and again. He said a, a just man <laughs> can fall seven times. They said, Lord, how many times shall I forgive him? He said, a just man. A just man, a good man, they may fall, but I'll keep forgiving them. I'll give you a chance after a chance after a chance after a chance after a chance. David committed adultery. David killed a good man. David was running from his own son, but yet God loved him. God called him a man after his own heart. You know why God loved him? Because he knew how to repent. He knew how to ask for forgiveness. He knew how to humble himself and get in some sackcloth and lay down in the presence of God. He knew how to fast. And say, God, I'll give it all up. Just give me another chance. And God said, that's a man after my own heart. I forgive you. And I don't hold it against you. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. You said, Father... God, in your word, you said, if I confess my sins to you, you are faithful and just to forgive me of it. Not tomorrow, not in the next hour, but the moment I confess, you will forgive me. Whether it's what you may call a big sin or a little sin, don't you know your thoughts can be sin? Father God, we come before you. I stand in the gap for myself and every one of my brothers and sisters in this house today. And I say, God, forgive. Young people, young people, especially young people, y'all need to close your eyes and ask God to forgive you. Because ain't none of you are without sin. And you need to earnestly ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Father, I stand right here, humble before you and I surrender myself to you God and I said God yes I did it yes I did wrong but Lord I know that you can forgive me you can heal this heart of mine my mind you can heal me God so right now God I confess it to you and I say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I'm open. Forgive me. Restore me. Restore me, God. Redeem me. 
give me another chance to get it right. In the name of Jesus Christ, who paid the price for my sin, as he interceded on my behalf at the right hand of you, that you will forgive me because you look at the stripes that he already endured and you see that stripe that I placed there. And I ask you now, wash me thoroughly, cleanse me with your huffs up, with your love, with your Holy Spirit. I surrender that fault to you, God, and I'm casting my cares on you. And I ask that you give me your yoke for their easy and their light. Free me from this bondage, God. Release this chain off of my mind and place me back in right standing with you. For it's against you and you alone have I sinned. Forgive me, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I believe I receive the forgiveness of my faults, of my mistakes, of my sin. Amen. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. And don't you know? Let me tell y'all something. I know perfect person. I've done some things in my lifetime. I had a temper. I didn't talk. I just did what I had to do. If I come to you and I'm talking calmly, but you act crazy, then I get crazy too. And my family, if they call me, I come running. And the last time I ran to the aid, three years later, something showed up. That's how he made a way of escape for me. Because I humbled myself before him. And I said, God, forgive me for what I did do. Forgive me, God. And if you will see me through this, if you will get me out of this, I'll never, ever go through that again. I'll never, ever run to the aid again. I'll run in the spirit, but I won't run in the natural. Because let me tell you something, people ain't going to go down with you. They'll let you take the charge, and they'll keep on walking. And I began to pray. I mean, I earnestly prayed to God. I fasted to God, and I went and I talked to my daddy. I talked to my uncle. I told them what really did happen. But it changed my life. And after I prayed, I'm thinking everybody gonna show up to court with me, you know? Where y'all at? Y'all love me. Y'all know what happened? Nobody showed up. But the man that I needed, the redeemer, the deliverer, the partner of my sins showed up in that courtroom. And when we came forth, my accuser came forth with her witness, and it was me and God. And the judge asked her, what happened? Oh, she said this, that, that, that. I mean, she was going. But the truth came out. 
And sometimes you ain't got to say nothing. God will begin to speak for you. Yes, I was there. I ain't going to lie, I was there. But I didn't do what she said I did. And God began to speak to that judge. And that judge said, you know what? I'm throwing this out. I'm dismissing this case. And no racket will be on you. Your fingerprints, get it back. I am dismissing it. It is thrown out as if it never happened before. Because my God redeemed me from the hands of the enemy. All the enemy thought he had me. Oh, he's I got it now. I got it now. I got it now. But God paid a ransom for me. And he got me out. So why did I tell you that? He can redeem you too. He is a redeemer. He loves you. He loves you. And he didn't send you here by coincidence. He knew a word was waiting just for you. Just for you. He did it for you, just like he did it for me. He can restore, he can heal, he can give you another chance to get it right. He don't hold it against you, and he don't want you to hold it against yourself. And I thank you, Lord, that you heard him when he prayed the first time. And I thank you, Lord, that you, God, said, I'll cover with the blood of Jesus Christ from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Cover him, God. And that which the enemy wanted to make for evil, the enemy wanted to destroy his destiny. Lord, I ask that you cover him. Give him that next opportunity to get it right. You said in your word that God, you are love, and love is God. And I am the Lord thy God that has redeemed thee, that has delivered thee, that has placed you back in right standing with him. You are the redeemed of the Lord. And right now, the blood of of Jesus Christ be upon you just like when the blood was on the doorposts of the Israelites and when the deaf angel tried to come through it could not penetrate the blood so father God everything that is trying to come against him it will not be able to penetrate the blood because whom the son has set free is free indeed and I thank you, Lord, that he shall and he will walk in that freedom. Father God, I thank you, Lord, you're going to bring people across his path that is going to mentor him, that is going to help him, that's going to make a way of escape for him in the natural, just like you already done for him in the spiritual. Go thy way and sin no more. Go thy way and sin no more. Hallelujah.